Here in Rome in 1603, an organization was founded that gave new impetus to the Renaissance cross-pollination of fine art and the natural sciences, the Accademia dei Lincei, the Academy of the Lynxes, named after the all-seeing eye of that sharp-witted animal. The group was a sort of cross between a scientific academy and a gentleman's club. It even numbered Galileo among its ranks. But in the field of drawing, the academy is significant for one man, its eccentric driving force, Cassiano del Pozzo. Cassiano recognized that he was living through a sudden explosion of new scientific knowledge. The period that saw the invention of the microscope and the telescope, optical tools that enabled new ways of seeing and of drawing. Now, drawing became very important to Cassiano as a way of feeding his own insatiable scientific curiosity. And he conceived the extraordinary idea of commissioning a vast collection of scientific drawings, one that was to contain all of human knowledge, as well as convey that knowledge in a direct visual form. It was a vastly ambitious scheme, and he called it Il Museo Cartaceo, the Paper Museum. Under the lynx-like gaze of the Lynchay's present-day director, I was allowed to look at some of the drawings which the Academy still owns. Cassiano spread the word about his great project all over Europe and commissioned hundreds of artists from many different countries to depict anything and everything the natural world had to offer. 400 years on, the drawings are still spellbinding. These vibrantly coloured depictions of different species of birds look as if they might have just been completed yesterday. The reach of the paper museum was widespread. The living, the dead, animal, vegetable, mineral. Not just one type of artichoke, for example, but every type of artichoke. By the time the project reached completion, it numbered around 15,000 drawings and watercolours in total. But if you really want to uncover the secrets of the Museo Cartaceo, you need access to the Royal Library at Windsor, because in one of his emphatically least mad moments, George III bought the lion's share of the surviving drawings in 1762, and they've been here ever since. Cassiano was a multifaceted man, but if he had one interest above all others, it was ornithology. So it's no wonder that some of the most spectacular drawings in the paper museum feature birds, like this almost life-size pelican, caught in wonderful living colour. But turn to just a few other sheets from the more than 5,000 kept here at Windsor, and you quickly get a sense of their almost bewildering variety. There are drawings of all sorts of things. A mutant two-headed melon. Some Roman cutlery and cooking utensils a vastly detailed depiction of a civet cat, a little too detailed if you ask me. As well as being a museum, it's a paper labyrinth, so to guide me through the maze, I turn to expert Martin Clayton. The paper museum, and I think almost of it sometimes as a, as a kind of intellectual road system, where you've got these roads that lead nowhere and then these big highways that yes. do seem to point towards the exactly. future of science. But it's only in retrospect that you can see that, of course. They didn't know those roads were going to lead nowhere, so they investigated every phenomenon of nature that they could to see what would come of it. And was this, um, th th what's this then? This is, is a broccoli, a, a monstrous broccoli. <laughs> a monstrous broccoli. <laughs> yes. And we have to assume it's <laughs> life-size. They used the microscope for some investigations, but little is magnified in this way, and so we assume that this was a a monstrous broccoli. And it falls into the category of the freak of nature. Exactly. Just well, so lovely to see them. This is one of the many hundreds of drawings of antiquities which Cassiano collected. It's one of eight drawings of a find in a, presumably in a tomb in central Italy, a Samnite set of armour. And Cassiano had eight drawings from different artists of different pieces of this armoury. From the same grave, we have this beautiful, beautiful drawing of two sides of the breastplate. Wow. Um, you can see the puncture wound which goes in there and oh, had come out there. This is one of very few drawings, maybe the only drawing that we can identify in Cassiano's collection from the hand of Nicolas Poussin. 
This is by Poussin? Yeah. On the grounds of style, I think we can be pretty sure about that. He was, of course, one of the great artists of the 17th century in Rome, and Cassiano was his greatest patron. He owned 40 paintings by Poussin. Uh, but this is the only drawing that Poussin seems to have executed for the paper museum. Um, in fact, it's one of the few drawings that can be attributed to any specific artist. For the most part, the individual plates Cassiano compiled, often bound into beautiful volumes by subject matter, are done in a straightforward, objective style. The thing itself was what really mattered. The thing, in this tome, being Roman antiquities, both beautiful and bizarre. What are these, Roman, Roman spoons? spoons? Uh, the back of a mirror. Oh, that's beautiful. This is nice, you have the front yeah. and back of the same object. Is that a man with a penis on his head? Uh, yes, it's a man with a penis on his head. It's a good look charm, and uh, it records <laughs> that it was in the collection of Cardinal Barberini, so... <laughs> good old Cardinal Barberini. Oh, dear. You could look at the paper museum and think, what an outlandish eccentricity. Every piece of plant life, every fruit, every mushroom. But behind this wonderful cornucopia of images, lies a serious purpose. The paper museum's the very foundation stone of modern science. It established the ground rules for empirical scientific research. It may have taken years and years of drawing, but what it said was this. In human knowledge, no progress can ever be made without finding out everything you can about everything there is. <laughs>